when you make a lot of different kinds of beer, there's a mild dilemma. Some of them go at a vastly higher rate than others. The typical way when you're selling anything that something happens like that is your most popular product, whatever it happens to be, will go at a ratio of, let's say, one to one. And your second most popular will go at a ratio of one to two. So half of number one. And your third most popular, of course, would be one to three, fourth, one to four, and eventually, in our case, one to 139. So in that particular case, some beers are more popular than others. But you never can guess in advance which ones those are really going to be. What we've done is set up so that we can make any kind of beer anyway and let them work their way out to which is most popular. When we first started, every brewery had the same five beers on tap. They would have a pale ale, they would have a stout, they would have an amber of some type, they would have a half a bison of some type, and then a very light lager. That's the same five beers. When you make a lot of beers, you find sometimes that that's going to be totally different. And what we ended up with was some of our most popular beers were not even considered in most places. For example, we have Final Absolution, Belgian-style triple, which has ended up being the number one beer at the World Beer Cup, which we won the medal for about four years ago, beating out African triple and West Ball triple two of my very favorite beers when I was uh, living in Belgium and really enjoy it. It's a 10% beer and rather potent. 10% would be 20 proof. Now another one that we have that we never would have thought would have been so popular but ended up in the top five is Under the Kilt, a wee heavy, sitting in at about 7.5% and a very, very nice Scottish strong ale. It also pulled the medal at the World Beer Cup a couple of years ago also. And just a lovely set with that. We also have Crown Jewels, which is an imperial India pale ale. But unlike most IPAs, this one is not bitter because it's balanced with the malt character that goes there. So it sits there and it runs about 6% and a very hoppy item to it, but not bad at all. And then of course, we have Sin Eater. Sin Eater is a totally different kind of beer. One of my very favorite beers is made by West Belletra, a monastery in Belgium, which is very difficult to get the beer from. So what we did is we went to Belgium to try this out and ended up not being able to get the beer because you have to be both a good Catholic boy and it had to be a boy and you had to be Catholic. Well, I'm not Catholic, my wife is, but she's not a boy, so that didn't work. Fortunately, my youngest son was touring wineries around Europe at the time and one of his professors was from Belgium and ended up uh, helping us get this by going to his local parish priest and we got the beer from the monastery. They don't talk at the monastery either, they're under a vow of no BS. So the conversations are very short. You sign a pledge, you take it back and you're not going to resell it and go. We also tried 138 other examples of strong dark Belgians while we were there and shipped 40 of them back to the States for more analysis. After going through that, we ended up creating Sin Eater, and Sin Eater is an incredibly wonderful, strong dark Belgian. It didn't win the medal, but it made it to the medal round of the World Beer Cup in its first try. So we'll try it again two years from now.